In this video I'll be showing you how to upgrade a Wii U gamepad dock to use a USB Type-C port. I've created this board you can see here, which replicates the shape of the original board inside the dock to do just that. This is pretty much a drop-in replacement for the original, with only a very small amount of sanding required. As well as having a USB Type-C port, this board has pads for resistors to allow it to be used with smart chargers, and additionally has pads that allow a switch to be fitted to the dock, so you don't have to leave your gamepad constantly on charge. While it won't charge your gamepad any quicker, it will allow you to use a standard connector rather than relying on Nintendo's proprietary charger. No modifications are necessary to the gamepad itself, and unless you choose to fit a switch, there are no external modifications to the dock either. You'll find the files to have this board manufactured, along with a link to our blog with a bit more detail on the parts you need to make one in the description below. To open up the gamepad dock, you'll first need to turn it over, and then you'll need to remove the five screws. All five are tri-wing screws that Nintendo commonly used in their consoles, and I removed them using a size zero bit. With the screws removed, the bottom half of the dock should come away quite easily. Now I should say that the dock we're looking at here has already been modified. A switch has been fitted which will be connected to the new board, which I'll talk about a bit more later on. As you can see, the dock has a very simple design, making it ideal for modification. Certainly, it's much simpler to modify the dock than it would be to try and modify the Wii U gamepad. Before removing the board, you'll want to desolder the two wires that will be connected at either end. On my board, these are already desoldered, but you can clearly see where the two wires would have been soldered to. With the wires desoldered, you can remove this piece entirely. I'd recommend doing this to avoid bending the pins that make contact with the gamepad. There's another plastic piece underneath this one that you can also remove. Remove the two Phillips head screws and then you should be able to lift out the board. With the old board removed we can do a quick comparison between this and the replacement. Unsurprisingly the overall design of the two boards is very similar with the new board designed to be a drop in replacement. Besides the addition of the resistors on the new board, the main difference between the two is of course the port that they use. Just comparing the two, you'll see that in terms of width, they're actually very similar, although the original charging port, which is also used on the Wii U gamepad, is much taller than the USB-C port. I'm just going to talk a little bit now about this switch that I've fitted, which I decided to add so I can leave the dock plugged in without the gamepad being constantly charged. The switch I'm using needs a hole around 8mm wide, and this area on the side is pretty much the only place you're going to be able to fit a switch of this type. You will need to make some alterations internally to the parts that hold in place the two wheels that the gamepad sits on when it's fitted into the dock. The one on the left hand side, as I'm looking at it, is unaltered. There's a couple of little slots there for the wire to sit in to keep things tidy. The right hand side, however, is rather messier. You can unscrew these parts to take them out, so I'll take each one of these out in turn so we'll be able to see the difference between the two. So taking this piece out, we can get a much better view of what the remaining plastic on this side looks like. You can see it's just this flat piece of plastic, the bit that sticks out of it has been removed completely. And now we'll look at the piece from the other side which is completely untouched and the difference should be quite clear. Now the plastic that I've cut from this piece keeps this rubber part here in position. It will move a little more easily than it otherwise would have done but I've had no problems with it staying in position even with the plastic cut off. You can see here that it does sit lower than the other side but it hasn't fallen out. If you're concerned, you could add a bit of glue to this on the inside, just to make sure that it doesn't move. Fitting the new board inside the dock is just as simple as removing the old one.
As the USB Type-C port is a fraction wider than the original, I found it necessary to sand a little bit away from the walls of the inside of the dock. If we take a closer look, we can see that there are two plastic supports that sit in the section that will fit around the port once it's put back together. In my experience, only a very small amount needs to be removed from each side, but if you do have problems putting it back together later on, you'll likely need to take a little bit more off of this section. Now at this stage, if you wanted to, you could try a quick test fit to make sure it all fits together correctly. To do so, simply push the base of the dock back into position, and it should close quite tightly around the USB-C port. You can clearly see here the gap above the port, due to its shorter height, and if you wanted to, you could try and fill this in with something, but it won't affect the functionality, and you won't be able to see it anyway. If you do choose to use a switch, make sure that you've got it soldered to the two labelled pads and if you're not using a switch, you do need to bridge those pads with either a bit of wire or a zero ohm resistor. Just make sure when you put the rest of the pieces back in that the wiring doesn't obstruct them. So now we can put this main piece back in, being careful to make sure the two prongs go through the holes and they don't bend. When you turn it over, if they do look like they've been flattened, you can just bend them back up until they sit in the correct position. You can feed the wires through the little slots in the plastic on either side. Unless of course you've removed that plastic as I have on the one side, so I'm just going to do this one just to keep it tidier on the inside. Now it's simply a case of soldering the two wires in place. The easiest way to do this will be to add a bit of solder to the pads beforehand and reflow the solder to attach the wire. Once that's done, all that's left to do is reassemble the dock. Now to give it a test. So there we can see it's charging correctly and I'll just try turning it off and on with the switch. And we can see that's working correctly as well. It's a simple board so there's not really much that could go wrong. The upgrade to this dock is now complete. If you'd like to create one of these for yourself, be sure to check out the description where you'll find a link to the files I've created so you can have this board manufactured for yourself. There's also a link to the guide that we have on our website. From time to time, I may have completed boards for sale. Again, you'll find a link in the description if I currently have some available. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to stick around for the next one.